Welcome to Yates Mates. So what are we up to today? Trying to get as much as I can out of the gel plate to use in mixed media pieces. Areas where we can directly print from objects as starting points, hand drawn areas, using wet strength tissue for building up translucent layers of collage and generally just having a lot of fun with all my favourite materials. Hopefully we'll give you some inspiration and ideas of how you can more creatively use your gel plate too. Let's get into it. Now why I love the gel plate, well there's many reasons, but for this sort of work it offers an opportunity to produce a really substantial starting point for this sort of work and look at it it's flexible so even where the object that i'm using i'm doing a direct transfer print impression not sure what we'll call it but i'm using that flexibility of the gel plate just to kind of wrap around this old decorating paintbrush which has got some lovely old textures it's got some embossed lettering on it it's got all the great fine texture of the bristles but the fact it's flexible and can slightly mold around the object means I can actually record some of the detail the kind of relief work in there that if I was working with a solid plate it just wouldn't work so there you go there's my starting point now I've got a load of black in the negative space that some of which I want and some of which I'm going to try and use to my advantage or use to create some interest in the piece and other areas as I'm doing here I just want to lift the weight and all I'm doing to lift the weight um, in the first instance is use some masking tape but you'll have to refresh the masking tape and I'm cleaning one edge there just to create some contrast and bring the contour the edge kind of contour of the object out um, on the other side I might keep some of the dark just to create a little bit of tonal contrast and balance so that's all I'm doing here is varying the size and rip and thickness of the piece of masking tape because that is going to create some interesting kind of abstract spaces. The torn edges are going to give you some um, interesting um, textures as well. Now, if you want to remove any of that surface acrylic in a more kind of focused, specific way, what I found is that a cotton bud or a Q tip. Um, as it's called in the States, just dipped in the slightest bit of water is a really useful way of removing any of that unwanted acrylic. Now, to get my kind of mixed media piece going, I, I wanted to get something down on paper. So I'm using some gel medium here to roll out, and this is going to be my wet layer that pulls the print. So I've a nice, even, thin layer. I'm flipping it over just so I can orientate that kind of um, uh, element where I want it on my paper. This is 300 GSM uh, Snowden paper, nice and heavy because we're going to be building up some layers. And there you go, there's that first layer transferred nicely. Okay, on to some textures. So here's a quick tip for you. Get your acrylic paint, mix it with a tiny bit of water and a tiny bit of gel medium, and then just swipe it down your gel plate the water that you've mixed in will naturally disperse those brush strokes into a more kind of pronounced, exaggerated, almost like kind of poppy style brush stroke. The sort of thing you might see in a kind of Lichtenstein painting or something like that. I, I don't know why I love these things. You might not, <laughs> you might, but I wanted a swipe of kind of paint running down the middle. So all I've done there is let that dry on the plate and it took quite a long time once it was totally dry I then used a layer of gel medium again to lift that transfer it again use the transparency of the plate itself to help position where I wanted that feature on my mixed media piece okay I'll just zoom in a little so you can see the texture that kind of drippy broken brush stroke texture that I've managed to achieve as I said before not sure why I like it so much but it just visually something about it so I'm mixing up a um, a little bluey gray here and I want to create some more 
textures, this time to transfer onto wet strength tissue and use as collage. So I'm going to use some text and I'm using magazine pages, glossy magazine pages to transfer some text of varying fonts, varying sizes, varying kind of boldness as well. So this is a little hit and miss. It usually works quite well. I found text because it's very high contrast as, you, as long as you're using the kind of black text on white background you should get a fairly reliable transfer thin layer light pressure now here i'm trying i've let that text layer dry completely and i'm using a technique that i picked up off of sally hurst from doing the gel printer summit rolled out a color and i'm using a little atomizer kind of spray bottle filled with water to spray onto that wet yellow paint and that is just the water is dispersing that paint nicely and then you've got to exercise some patience let that dry fully now while that's drying i'm gonna produce in a very similar manner a whole sheet of this texture so i've gone for a very kind of warm gray this time and i'm kind of putting in a color blend coming from one edge and i am then going in with my atomizer bottle again while that paint is wet on the plate and you'll see here fairly quickly all i put it into is an old like uh, lens cleaner bottle that i've rinsed out filled with water but you can see already within seconds little areas of separation are going to start occurring on the plate where that water is doing its magic now you leave that for long enough and you'll get a really interesting texture i'm not going to bore you to tears that sat there for about two or three hours now i love using the flexibility of the gel plate as you saw earlier in the video but you can kind of roll and crack some of that paint as well again that might give you some interesting textures so here we're moving on to the transfer again gel medium so i want the transparency because i'm going to be transferring this onto wet strength tissue paper you just got to try and stretch it out as best you can avoid your wrinkles again let that dry about 10 minutes and there you go an interesting kind of almost like a peeled paint type texture i'll put a black or i'll put my cutting mat under just so you can see that a little clearer so i'm going to focus this texture on the left hand side but i want to use it in the negative space around some drawn elements and this is why i love working in mixed medias i mean those of you that know my channel know i love drawing and i love to incorporate drawing and with working with the gel plate so there's that um piece of uh, collage material that i've just transferred onto wet strength tissue and what i've done is i've sketched out a little palette knife and shape of a, a brush from my brush pot as well and i'm going to use this um piece of collage material that i've made in part to kind of form some texture on the handle on the on the actual object but also in the background the two are going to kind of bleed into each other and this is why i love using this wet strength tissue is that you can really work with the transparency of it and um, work over the top with subsequent layers as i will do in a moment so i'm back to this little area of text with some yellow that I've dispersed with some water to create some textured layer again going to transfer this with some gel medium onto some more wet strength tissue leave that five or ten minutes peel that up and I've got some more interesting layers to work with that are going to reveal some of the layers I've already get that uh, got down so this this piece I'm going to try and work into the negative space. That is the space between the, the objects, the two objects I've just drawn, and to see if I can start pulling the objects forward out of the paper, essentially, and, and, and forward in the composition. So all I'm doing is using, again, that transparency of the, tr uh, the, the tissue. I can quite clearly see my objects, the outline of my objects underneath, so I can quickly sketch those outlines, use my cutting mat, use my knife to then or some scissors um, to cut those shapes out doesn't have to be too neat because I'm going to be working back into this area with other drawing materials you know both wet and dry materials so um, 
there you go I'm just cutting that fairly roughly not worrying too much about precision I'm sticking all of this collage material down with a glue stick now I found glue stick really stays it lasts the distance I know there was some chat on a previous video um, about the kind of permanence of this but I've not found any problems as long as you use enough of it make sure you're you know you're pressing it down it lasts I use gel medium sometimes I use PVA sometimes because both dry transparent but I found glue stick is a little quicker a little less messy and allows me to kind of preserve areas of paper without sealing them um, if I want to do drawing that can be really useful as well um, or go in subsequently with pens pastels etc so again just tracing out some more areas just to identify the shapes I need to work into the negative spaces I think in my experience you know people who love to draw they often neglect negative spaces and I think working into them with collage before you get going with the drawn parts um, can make a lot more interest create a lot more interest but can also really cut down the amount of work you can do you can describe the lot a lot about the form of an object just by using negative space so there you go um, already you can see my um, without doing any tonal work any textural work on the object itself apart from a little bit of collage I'm already getting quite a lot of form appearing on that palette knife so I'm getting to the stage now where I'm nearly ready to use something like my favorite pens pencils whatever drawing materials um, that I fancy to start putting in some some detail some texture some tone I'm going to do one more quick gel plate technique though um, just to try and tie a bit of a few of the elements together you know I'm playing I'm, I'm doing this on a piece of paper with a kind of finished print in mind but it's essentially kind of like a sketchbook page so all I'm doing here is using some masking tape I've, masking tape is fairly transparent so you can lay it over sections of your work and trace them and get a fairly accurate mask so I'm just masking off the handle of the paintbrush there and I'm going to do exactly the same for the shape of the palette knife and those areas are just going to protect or those masks are going to protect those areas for the next technique that I'm going to use which again is a gel plate technique and that is using a ballpoint emboss to create just a quick linear scribble really that I can then transfer onto the plate and subsequently straight onto the print as I'm doing here. Now the scribble needs to be a deep enough emboss that it is going to be raised or the inverse of it is going to be raised. I'm doing a very thin layer of orange here and spreading it out nice and evenly, flipping that little emboss over, putting some even pressure on it. You're not going to get a perfect print here because the scribble is, is quite tight in places and I've pressed quite hard. But what I don't want is perfection. What I want is a really broken line that actually would be quite hard to do in pen directly onto those surfaces. So I think even though this might appear to be quite laboured, actually it's going to give me a more gestural mark that's a lot easier to control and, and would actually be quite hard to apply in a pen and get the sort of control and opacity that I want as well so I'm just laying that over the top of the area um, and of course across the top of the masks the masking tape masks that I've just made let that dry for a little while and peel up your masks and then you've got well what I was hoping for was this you know a further layer of texture that just runs behind my objects to kind of tie them together and bring it forward so now I'm just working in with my pro markers I'm working in with a water soluble pen using a brush pen to, to dilute some of that and create some some grays if you've not used them before these Caran dash um, crayons are fantastic they blend really well they they're quite opaque, they, they seem to work over most materials, acrylic paint, um, papers, 
all sorts of stuff so they're really good fun to use just going to blend those in to try and get some of those metallic surfaces just enjoying the textural variety that they offer working against that kind of layered paint texture jelly plate collaged areas as well that's what i aim for with mixed media work is really enjoying the different qualities of the mixed media materials that i'm using okay this you know the the remainder of this is, is fairly self-explanatory it's, it's just layering really um working through this is just so, uh, hp pencil just trying to identify some of the key tones and details get a little underdrawing in going in again with a water soluble pen using my brush pen to dilute and, and disperse some of those areas create a few blends get that kind of metallic feel um, there's a lot of kind of old crusty paint stuck to the end of this palette knife another reason why you know what attracted me to drawing it in the first place i love drawing everyday objects um so yeah there you go not a lot of commentary needed really um if you enjoy drawing you'll kind of relate to this i guess you may do um but certainly i'm enjoying it more because of that work i've done into the negative space and it is actually <clears throat> even though you see me doing quite a lot of work here it's it's minimizing the amount there's a lot going on in the background that helps kind of describe that form as well so pro markers again i love pro markers because you can layer them particularly the kind of really pastely very light colored pro markers they're such fun to draw with really good fun to sketch with out and about figures buildings whatever um so there you go yeah um just layering and layering um until i feel like calling it a day best thing about this sort of thing is you just don't feel any pressure with it there's there's no um there's no great objective i guess is the word beyond just enjoying the materials and you know in that you can just get lost a little more collage work going into this negative space just to try and lift up the white of the the handle of the thin paintbrush the fan paintbrush on the right and pretty much there okay finish this one up now run a little bit of collage through there just cut it to shape bring the sort of uh, profile of that brush forward a little got that kind of vertical accent to go with the other ones and then just broken it up with a horizontal one there just trying to tie bits of the composition together you know i may have overcooked it ah, who knows look the, the main thing i'm trying to communicate is texturally if you can get some interest some variety to your mixed media work it really doesn't matter what the subject matter is um it's if you're presenting something that has got some visual interest and you know there's elements of this that i'm really pleased with um mostly though i'm liking how the textures combine and yet you know yet another reason why just gel plates are so good for so versatile for helping get a variety of textures that you can start combining whether and it's whether it's in a single kind of monotype or whether it's you know as here with a bit of collage with a bit of hand drawn with a bit of printed i mean you know they're just incredible okay here's a, a couple of sort of close-up details just so you can see how those textures are working and then we'll move on to uh, another quick example i won't go through this one in so much detail but um, again started with a brush this is one of those kind of lovely flat handled brushes so it transferred so well i didn't even need to manipulate the 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 plate around it so um again some exactly as before some of those textures made with dispersing a simple layer of paint rolled out onto the gel plate this time i'm i'm starting by transferring some of the texture itself so i've just rooted off a, a strip of that collage piece i'm going to plonk it straight down again it's a starting point that i can then build up and build upon and um, again I, I love the, the transparency of this wet strength tissue just so lovely to work with I'm ripping back edges there where I only partially applied glue stick just to get a break in that 
shape. Um, here's my gel plate transferred brush that again I did some work on the negative space and the background. Again I've transferred it with gel medium and you'll see there very quickly, you know, it took just a few minutes really. Got the starting point, the basis of something that I can then work into. So again, some hand-drawn parts, scribbling in, just working with a pencil first, just getting my basic shapes done, had a little bit of um, scribble to get some background in there as well. Working with um, my soluble handwriting pen, using my brush pen to dilute those inks a bit, get some metallic textures, building up the layers it does not take long. Again, this is a slightly softer pencil. Now here, I'm gonna work in some different layers of wet strength tissue collage. Again, this was gel, gel plated. This, this time though, I used some cardboard to stamp in because I wanted some more kind of industrial looking textures to, to go over my peeling paint. Um, Again, as I did with the previous example, just tracing off using the transparency of that tissue paper to get a more exact shape to work in as a collage piece into my negative space. Again, using glue stick, as I said before, I find it totally adequate. It's very permanent. It's not going anywhere, especially as if you were to you know, do a piece to frame, it's gonna hold it all down anyway. So yeah, just working in some more layers there with my initial layers peeking through obviously because I'm using this tissue paper which is just fantastic stuff definitely worth buying some wet strength tissue sometimes called carnival paper too um, I've tried to use just your kind of bog standard tissue but it's oh it's a nightmare it rips it falls to pieces so here you're going to see me just like in my last one I'm, I'm going with that fan brush as well and again just trying to use negative spaces to describe the form particularly on the handle rather than actually drawing it. So I am essentially drawing it in a way, but just through collage and through negative space. And then I'm gonna preserve the drawn areas as I did in the last one, just for the very top detail, the metal kind of molded part at the top and then the bristles. And a little bit of outlining just to get a bit of clarity down at the bottom, but that's all it needed. Few more collage pieces so you can see straight over that line that I just <laughs> just made because I really wanted it purely to be described by the negative space again pro markers again back in with layers you can build up some opacity some saturation of color with these if you just keep working the layers you know what what a joy to be able to get these amazing drawing materials kind of relatively cheaply you can and, and they really last as well if you look after them and you can get a lot of mileage out of them so there we go just finishing up okay there's the second one done kind of finished a little more simple probably more pleased with this one just feels a bit less fussy less labored um and i'm you know again can have to say thanks to sally hurst um for this sort of like water dispersal kind of technique mixed with the the layers of kind of corrugated card to get these textures and then working on this wet strength tissue to get that translucency um just you know so much fun to work with and again combined with the sort of stuff that i love you know the printed elements the hand drawn elements the painted the, the mixed media elements so yeah another one done um and uh yeah these techniques um, as I'll show in a future video, you kind of work equally well if you kind of zoom out and work on a kind of landscape or architectural kind of subject matter as well. Okay, I hope that was of use to you. I hope there's some nuggets in there, some things you can take away. I hope that if you're not already in love with mixed media, like I am, that this video may have kind of sparked a little interest um, for you to have a go and try. Remember all those good things, you know, like, subscribe to support the channel and, um, you know, please leave comments, any questions below. I'll look forward to seeing you soon in another video. Ta-ta.